Super Helldive is here, and that means the enemies of humanity have suddenly found themselves with an unearned sense of confidence. I'm about to show y'all how a commissar puts the fear of managed democracy into these ornery fossil fuels in this new age of an escalation of freedom. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and today we're going to be going over how to survive the new Super Helldive missions against the Bugs with a special guest, Easy. He is one of Democracy's most dedicated Helldivers and makes fantastic content, so be sure to check him out. Bug breaches are lasting longer, patrols are bigger, and the new enemy types are throwing a socialist wrench into our usual plans. But with a well-planned loadout, solid teamwork, and a burning hatred of our enemy, we can grind those bugs up and stuff them right into our gas tank. Now that you know what the video is about, let's drop in and make a new gas station. While we get set up, let's quickly go over our loadout, since we'll be talking about it a lot throughout the video. For weaponry, we're taking Freedom's greatest diplomat, the AC-8 Autocannon. This bad boy will paste anything up to and include an Impaler, and really only struggles against Bile Titans. Since we'll be dealing with hordes of medium-sized enemies, the Autocannon in its generalist role is perfect for handling any situation, especially when we combine it with Stun Grenades for giving those chargers a 23mm enema. Backing it up, we have the Arc Blitzer and Bushwhacker Shotgun for a nasty 1-2 punch. The Blitzer is going to be the main focus of our loadout by letting us play a more frontline role and for setting up a truly democratic combo. That combo being the pushback and stagger the Arc Blitzer with the devastating firepower of the Orbital Gatlin Barrage. Throw in some stun grenades and we can force the hordes of bugs to sit in our 23mm high explosive shower until they're cleansed of all their bad ideas. For additional support, we'll be taking the Orbital Precision Strike, which is a great answer for an Impaler or Bile Titan that needs an urgent meeting with Lady Liberty and the autocannon sentry to hold down a location while we push forward. You can honestly swap these two out for whatever you'd like, but I found this combination to be extremely effective. This loadout sounds like a good time to you, then like the video. That one click helps out a ton with my mission to spread cooperation, team play, and good tactics to the Helldiving community. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. Now that you know what we'll be working with, let's get on with talking about how to tackle Super Helldive missions. Super Helldive comes with all sorts of perils. But the one that caught me the most off guard was the change to bug breaches and patrols. Now I've killed over 70,000 bugs in my career as a Helldiver, and I've gotten a good feel for breaches and patrols. I can say with absolute confidence that breaches last longer and patrols are denser in Super Helldive missions. This has a few implications, but the most important one we want to focus on is how to deal with those wandering patrols during a bug breach. Since breaches last so long, we'll be dealing with this situation pretty frequently. Having these chitinous freaks wander in on you while you're focused on a breach can be deadly. So to avoid it, we're going to treat it like it's an ambush. When you're caught in an ambush, the worst thing you can do is panic and try to run away. This just makes you an easy target and lets the bugs break up your unit cohesion. Instead, we're going to turn into the ambush and fight our way through it. Let's take a look at an example. Now, I really wish I could have had y'all hear the original audio for this video, but for some reason it didn't record my end of it, so you can't hear me talking. So I'm just going to do my best to give y'all the update on what's going on. So here, this is a good showcase of how to use the loadout. I threw the autocannon sentry up on a ridge overlooking the bug breach, and I'm just playing that frontline role. I'm sticking up front with my arc blitzer, because you know it's got great stagger and I don't want to accidentally zap my teammates too much if I don't have to. And as soon as something big pops out like a bile titan, we just call it out, bile titan, and as you can see, everybody just destroys it. Now someone said here that we're getting surrounded. So I turn around and I see this patrol wandering in, and that immediately made me think like, oh, I can't have myself be between these two enemies, so I ping this uh, location over here, trying to get my team to fight through the ambush. I tell them, push through the patrol, and then we'll turn around and focus on the bug breach. And that's exactly what we do. So because we did that, now the enemies are all still going to come at us from the same direction, instead of coming at us from both sides. That's because we just did a simple about face and we just marched our way into these stupid bugs, took them all out, and then we could turn around and finish off the patrol, or finish off the bug breach. Now I know some of y'all might be asking, but Commissar, what do I do when I'm playing with random people? You're playing with a great YouTuber. Well, it doesn't really matter, y'all. Instead, if they weren't cooperating with me, I would just make it my responsibility with my autocannon and my blitzer and my grenades to take out that patrol by myself. Because I know that if I have three teammates all looking at a bug breach, or even just one teammate looking at a bug breach, at least we're not going to get caught off guard. And that's kind of the most important bit. As long as we're not getting stabbed in the back without warning, we should be fine. Now, a good loadout helps a lot when it comes to just annihilating the enemies of humanity. But... 
when there's enough of them, we do have to kind of rely on something other than raw firepower. So what we're going to look at here is positioning. So me and S2 have been split or have split off from the team and we're taking out this heavy bug nest while the rest of the team deals the primary. And between the new brood commanders that spawn the cracked out warriors that they're like a mix between a hunter and a warrior y'all. I'll try to get a picture of them up on screen now, but they are scary. But because these enemies are more numerous and they have the ability to spawn things in, plus with the usual perils of clearing a bug breach, we have to use positioning. This is the next thing I'm going to talk about for this part. But using these kind of death funnels, but you see I put the auto cannon sentry on top of the ridge looking directly into the bug or into the bug nest, and I'm sitting up here with my auto cannon, my blitzer, my stun grenades and all my other stuff just laying into the bugs as they all file up this ramp. Since they, all, as you can see, their corpses have piled up pretty nicely. But since they all coalesced in the same direction, S2 was able to hop in there and start clearing bug holes. And now I need to go help him out too, because I don't want to spend too long here because of the aforementioned lots of patrols and bug breaches being ridiculous. If making our loadout is step one, and step two is having good positioning, step three is going to be knowing how to use what our teammates have. Like, one thing I do in every match is I make sure I know at least what support weapon each of my teammates are using. And as you can see, S2's got a flamethrower. Now, for any of y'all that are going to complain about the flamethrower, it's still a flamethrower. You just got to shoot chargers in the butt. That's really the only thing that changed. It still wipes out all the little guys with complete ease, and it's a very effective weapon. I've tried it on Super Helldive. But because I know S2's got one, I know he can deal with these little griblies. I don't really need to keep fighting them. And, you know, the Arc Blitzer, while it is a great weapon, it can be a little slow sometimes if the Arcs aren't blitzing to the right targets. So as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to just sprint away to deal with those last bug holes because I know S2 with his flamer, he's going to deal with all these little guys. He's a person with a flamer, and there's a bunch of little bugs. It's a match made in heaven. I was fortunate enough to have a team that wanted to work with me because we were all trying Super Helldive for the first time. But if that's not the case for you, this is still useful because if I bring a Bile Titan to somebody who's got a recoilless rifle, I don't have to tell them to shoot it. They're going to want to shoot it anyway because that's why they brought the weapon. And that's my reasoning for paying attention to what support weapons my teammates have. Because even though I can't carry a flame or a spear and a grenade launcher all at the same time, I have three teammates that can. So if I know what they're using, I can just bring the enemies that I don't want to deal with towards them and they'll handle it for me. Now that y'all have had a chance to kind of get the gist of the important aspects of Super Helldive, let's talk about the new enemies, because understanding them is making it a lot easier to kill them. So first off, we've got the new Brood Commander. I mentioned this guy a little bit, but I do want to say some other things. They are aggressive as crap. I don't know. I was shocked at how aggressive these enemies are. You blow off a few of their limbs, they seem to get faster and more eager to tear you to pieces. So they're a very high priority target, whereas the old brood commanders were more like a bullet sponge. These guys are actually dangerous because they spawn more enemies that are, like I said, are like a cross between a warrior and a hunter. They're very deadly. And they do it pretty often in addition to being pretty dangerous themselves. Next up, we have my favorite new addition to the game, the Impaler. This bug adds just a lot of spice to these bug missions that I just wasn't feeling before. I've mostly been a bot diver for majority of my career. I do enjoy pacing the bugs, but bots just speak to me. But the Impaler is changing that, and that's because it makes the bugs way more interesting. The idea is that their tentacles kind of prevent you from running away, because they have very long range, they can keep kind of like chasing you a bit, and they stagger you like crazy. I haven't noticed that they're that immediately lethal, but knocking you over constantly and chipping away at your health it's really rough against the Terminids. It's not something we really had to deal with before since they're always so aggressive and they're always pushing right up on you. Unlike Bile Titans, Impalers force you to deal with them. If you don't, things will get nasty real quick. But where they get real bad is with our number one most dangerous enemy against the Terminids, the Spore Charger. Now this is just a regular Charger, but it carries a Spore Spew around on its back. And that reduced visibility is harsh. It's really hard to see through. And since you can't see anything, things like hunters or the new brood commander's little warriors become infinitely more dangerous. Throw an impaler on top of that, making it harder to run away, a rampaging charger that you can't see until it's about 10 meters out, and it can be tough. I, I won't deny it. It's a hard challenge, but there are ways to deal with it. The main one I've found is to get your team to move out of its mushroom cloud of bug crap 
and get it to actually come at you because sometimes it'll get like hung up on a rock or you know hiding behind a building or something and you're basically screwed because you can't see anything and if an impaler spawns you're either going to have to leave or hunt it down and kill it so instead just try to get the charger to come to you and then deal with it how you deal with chargers it's a regular charger i hadn't seen a behemoth one yet so just one recoilless rifle shot to the face and it'll die once it's dead, the spore cloud goes away in just a few seconds, so make sure you prioritize those big suckers first, because that spore cloud makes everything around it a lot more dangerous, especially the impalers. Impalers are probably next up on the target priority list just because of how dangerous they can be. Not directly, but being staggered when you're being chased by a group of hunters is usually a death sentence, so make sure that you can take those guys out as quick as possible. But one tip I'll give you is that they can be a little bit snaky. Sometimes they just stuff their face into a rock, and because of how they look, they, they just look like a piece of the scenery. So use your pings often if you're not quite sure if it's an impaler or just a rock, just ping it. Because if it is, it'll give you that affirmative ping, and you can just lay into it with whatever firepower you need. In this loadout, we have the orbital precision strike. We can just chuck at it if it's, you know, in an awkward position. Otherwise, we're just going to go right up to its face and just blast him with seven auto cannon shots and he'll fall over dead. Super Hell Dive has introduced a whole host of new challenges to the game in the form of the new enemies, the new spawn rates on the bug breaches, and all this other stuff. By the way, again, I'm just stipulating this on Super Hell Dive. I don't know if it's the case on lower difficulties. But because there's so many new challenges, teamwork has become more important than ever, along with good positioning and other stuff that's kind of tangentially related to our loadout. But here, because I have a good weapon for, you know, pushing back the tide and doing a little bit of crowd control, and I've got the auto cannon sentry to sit up on a hill, we can just overlook this bug breach and just rain hell down upon them until, you know, we get overrun. Which is about to happen after I blast easy in the face with my arc blitzer after this hunter hit me. Taking his head off is going to have some consequences, because now I no longer have his firepower backing me up. And as you can see, my auto cannon sentry got overwhelmed and got swarmed by hunters, so we gotta call him back in and retreat down the hill. We need to make a little bit more space between us and the bug breach so we don't just get overwhelmed. And I knew that that was the case as soon as I killed my teammate. Because your teammates, even if you don't have any faith in them at all, you gotta trust that they're playing this game because they like it and they wanna shoot bugs and bots. So you can trust them always to shoot bugs and bots if you bring them to them. If we can trust in that one fact, it makes it a lot easier to coordinate with a group especially if you're on comms with each other. But here, you know, we've got a nice firing line. Everybody's enjoying themselves, blowing these socialist animals to pieces, so we don't got to worry about target priorities or getting overwhelmed by chargers or whatever because we're all focused on the same thing, shooting the bugs that are in front of us that are coming over a hill and down towards us. So that's going to mean that they're very limited in how many they can send at us at any one time. It also means our more explosive ordnance from Eagle One or the Super Destroyer has a lot more target density to fall down on. So if we have everything coming over the hill and we just chunk a bunch of stratagems, if there's, you know, a Bile Titan or a bunch of Chargers or whatever, it doesn't matter, they will all die. We can just rely on our support weapon in primary until we meet a threat that we need to throw stratagems at. Y'all probably saw it on the minimap, but it's time to take on the super outpost for the terminids but as i'm admiring it i get nibbled on by some griblies and then a freaking impaler shoots up through the ground so proper introduction to the new super outpost now here i noticed that there are three impalers around and uh that's kind of a problem we need to deal with before we get into the innards of this outpost but if y'all notice two of these don't have their tentacles deployed so i was looking for the third one that did and I finally found him, shut him up with the auto cannon, but now I'm completely surrounded by hunters, brig commanders, bunch of impalers. It's, it's horrible. So I don't want to be here anymore. So I'm going to do a tactical retreat and get the hell away from this outpost so I can kind of regroup, get my stratagems going, get them all kind of funneled into one area, and then blow them the hell up. But unfortunately, my team dies before I can do anything about it. So I decide it's time to just run away. We need to regroup and get our ducks in order before we assault this rest of this outpost. They already took out a lot of it because they're great players and know what they're doing. 
but we do need a minute to get our bearings. Since we need to stand around a little bit anyway, I called in the resupply and I'm just gonna fight from this position for as long as I can until my teammates are able to kind of regroup, get their stuff back and finish off the rest of this outpost. Because both our primary and support weapon can do area of effect damage, we're gonna be very effective at actually just shooting down all these little bugs, taking out the big tentacles and just making life a little bit easier for our team. But then I die in the most mysterious way possible. I had no clue how I died there, and I had to go frame by frame to discover I got nailed in the head by an orbital cluster strike. It happens. I thought it was hilarious because I just immediately exploded, and I didn't know why until I just looked at it. But because they're going to have to scoop me up in a jar, I need to just call in a new auto cannon. I was looking around to see if it was close, but I had it available, and I'm, I'm not going to go chase it, y'all. I don't even know where it is. So now that I've got my stuff back, I want to try to group back up with my team, but I get a little bit cut off by hunters and a little bit of my own bad decision making. I don't know why I wandered over here to shoot that guy with a blitzer. I should have just regrouped with E1 and my other teammate. But I made my bed and now I got to sleep in it. And since I can't get to my teammates immediately, I figured what I would try to do is at least pull as many of these suckers away as I could and then nail them with the orbital Gatlin barrage. So I throw out some stun grenades, get them to sit still a little bit, and I'm just going to keep firing because this noise and this, you know, death and destruction, it's going to encourage more of the Terminates to come at me, and hopefully fewer of them will go towards my team while they take out this outpost. I would love to show you all the interior of it, but, you know, circumstances happen and I'm just going to be stuck in this role. But I still think it's important to show that, you know, even if you can't go charging head first, you can still kill a whole lot of bugs and still be useful to your team by just pulling threats away from the, you know, primary objective or the bug hive or whatever you're trying to deal with. But actions do have consequences, and because I spent a lot of time and effort making a whole lot of noise and dead bugs, they are now all looking at me, or at least a whole bunch of them are. So I need to figure a way out of this mess, and I know I can't exactly just kill it, you know, I don't really have the capability to do that. So I use whatever tools I have, I've got a little bit of AoE damage from the explosive bit of the uh, auto cannon, so I make use of that. But I can't realistically deal with both of these chargers while I have no ammo in my auto cannon, very low on stems, and I'm far away from my team. Not to mention there's a Bile Titan, and uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of other stuff that pops up. But basically, I, need, I know I need to leave, and I need to get away from this mess so I can regroup and start being useful again. I run into these three Impalers. One of them sticks his face in the ground, so I throw the Orbital Precision Strike, and that takes out two of them. But now the third one's looking at me funny. I know it's going to take him a second to deploy those tentacles, so I get the reload off, and I'm just going to wait for him to try to do something. And as soon as he does, I'm going to give him my answer, which is a bunch of autocannon shots directly to his stupid face. After getting barfed on by Barry the Bile Titan here, I'm kind of screwed. I don't have ammo in my autocannon, I don't have a stratagem up for him because I used it on the two impalers, and I have no health and it, it's just bad, y'all. So I'm just kind of praying to liberty that my sacrifice here will be worthwhile. But y'all know me, I'm not gonna give up and die. So I pull out the resupply, chunk it in the vague direction of my teammates, and I'm just gonna hope that this all works out. But thankfully, my faith paid off, and my teammates were able to wipe out the rest of this stupid bug nest. Honestly, y'all, it's really cool, but it's the bugs that's stupid. So I'm just gonna, you know, restock up, and we're gonna head towards extraction. There's a ton to still cover with this new escalation of freedom, and I cannot wait to show you all the bots. But for now, we're going to call it here. I hope you've learned something, and I hope you enjoy the new Super Helldive. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.